Okay. Okay, so the second talk of this session is a collision attack on up to five rounds of SHA-3 using generalized internal differentials by Itai Inouf, Ordo Kuman, and Adi Shamir. And Itai will give the talk. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Okay, so uh, I think you all know by now that uh, Ketchup was selected as the new SHA-3. And uh, I will uh, first uh, describe to you how Ketchak is built, but I will only concentrate on the uh, parts that are relevant uh, to this talk. So uh, Ketchak officially supports uh, officially supports the uh, hash sizes N of 224, 256, 384, and 512 bits, and uh, the hash function is built using the sponge construction. So basically, we have a state which is divided into two parts. So the first part is of R bits, the second part is of C bits. The state is initialized to, to zero. And uh, in our attack, we have only one message block, so I will not describe to you the whole uh, sponge construction. Basically, what we do is we XOR the, the message block into the R bits, so the, the message block is of size R bits. And then we apply some function f, and finally we truncate the, the first n bits of state and send them to the output. So that this is basically the sponge construction applied only to one message block. Okay, so uh, in the case uh, of Ketchak, f is a permutation that, that works on the state of uh, 1600 bits, so this is the size of the state, and uh, the value of c is equal to 2n, which leaves r to be 1600 minus 2n. Okay, uh, so the internal state of Ketchak, uh, like I said, it is of size 1600 bits. It can be viewed as a 5 by 5 by 64 bit cube, as uh, shown here. Uh, but we will use, usually use uh, the, another uh, representation as a 5 by 5 matrix where each cell is of size, uh, is a lane, it's called a lane, it is of size 64 bits, okay, in the direction of the z-axis, axis. Okay, so what about the function f? So the function f has 24 rounds. Okay, but well each round consists of, uh, which we denote by r, consists of uh, five mappings. So the first uh, three mappings uh, of Ketchak are linear, and we will denote their uh, composition by uh, by the letter L. Okay, and we will refer to L as uh, as a half round sometimes, where the uh, composition of the two other uh, chi and iota mappings make up the other half. Okay, so I will not describe to you exactly how L is uh, is built because it is. Uh, the, the exact details are not very relevant for, for this talk. Okay, and then uh, chi is the only nonlinear mapping of Ketchak. It can be viewed as an S-box layer, which applies the same 5 to 5-bit five S-box to the uh, 320 rows of the state independently. But again, this is not a very important... Uh, you don't really need to remember this for this, uh, uh, for this talk. But just remember that it is... Uh, the only nonlinear component of uh, of Ketchak. Okay, and finally, uh, IOTA uh, adds a low Hemingway round constant to the state. Okay, and one important uh, thing that I already noted, but you should remember, is that the state is initialized to zero before we are we are storing it with the first message block. Okay, so uh, in this, uh, this work, we, are, we will be interested in collision attacks on reduced versions of Ketchup. So what are the previous uh, results in this, uh, in this area? So uh, first, uh, this paper, uh, which appeared at the end of 2012, uh, showed collision, collisions in two rounds of Ketchup 224 and 256. And then uh, at FSC uh, last year, we improved this uh, uh, this uh, result uh, too far, so we have collisions on four rounds of Ketchup 224 and 256. Uh, however, uh, up to this work, there are no published collision attacks on the larger versions of Ketchup, Ketchup 388, Ketchup 3, 
84 and Ketchuk 512. Okay, so what we do in this work? So this is this, these are the the previous results, and you can see there are no previous uh, collisions attack collision attacks on the large versions of uh, of Ketchum. So in, the, in, the, in this work, uh, we published the first uh, three round collision attack on Ketchup 512, uh, which is practical. For Ketchup 384, we also have a three round practical collision attack. And for uh, four rounds of Ketchup 284, we have a collision attack, which is faster than the birthday bound by a factor of 2 to the 45. And then finally, for Ketchup 256, uh, we have a five-run collision attack, which is faster than the birthday bound by a factor of two to the thirteen. Okay, so we uh, in, uh, we increase the number of rounds which can be attacked from four to to five for this catch-up version. Okay, so let's get into a bit more detail. So all of our attacks are based on the, the well-known uh, property of the Ketchup mappings, which was described in the Ketchup uh, uh, reference document. Okay, and it, uh, it is called the, transla uh, the translation invariance property, uh, which states that four out of, of the five internal mappings of Ketchup, basically all of the mappings but IOTA, are translation invariant in the direction of the z-axis, uh, which to remind you is of length 64. Okay, uh, in other words, what, the, what does it mean for a mapping to be translation invariant in the direction of the z-axis? It means that basically if one state is a rotation of another state with respect to the z-axis, then if we apply to it any of the first four catch-up mappings, then this property <coughs> is maintained. So if we look at it in a schematic way, Okay, so what does it mean to rotate a state in the direction of the z-axis? So if this is a catch-up state, and this is represented as a 5 by 5 uh, matrix, where each, uh, each such uh, cell is a lane, then we basically rotate uh, each lane by the same, uh, uh, by the same uh, uh, number of bits, uh, i, Okay, and we rotate each of the lines, so this, this, that's what it means to rotate a, a state. Okay, and, and this property leads us to look at, uh, at a special type of states which we call symmetric state. So what is a symmetric state? A symmetric state is a state which is rotation invariant in the direction of the z-axis by some rotation index i. Now, if uh, we want i not to be trivial, uh, trivial value is 64, uh, then i uh, has to divide uh, 64, which means that i uh, is either 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, or 32. Okay, in order to get uh, kind of a picture of what symmetric states look like, then we will define uh, another naming convention, which is called the consecutive slice set. So let's see an example what is a consecutive slice set. It is very simple. So assume that i equals 16, uh, and we, in this case, the state is split into four consecutive slice set, or CSS in short. So this is, uh, uh, again, a scheme of the, of the Ketchup state, which uh, shows the values of the, of the first consecutive slice set. So basically, we, we look at each lane, and we take the first 16 uh, bits in each lane. Okay, so this is the first consecutive slice set. And then the second in the second consecutive slice set, we take the, the second sequence of 16 bits, and so forth. So we have four such consecutive uh, slice sets. Okay, and, and, and basically in symmetric states, all consecutive slice sets are equal. Okay, so if, we, again, in our example, i equals 16, uh, then each 64-bit plane is basically composed of, four, uh, of a four repetition of a 16-bit value. Okay, so we have A1, 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 B1, B1, and so forth. Okay, so it is a very, you can see the, the large degree of symmetry, and this, this is why we call it a symmetric state. Okay, so why are we looking at such symmetric state? Because the translation invariance property that I uh, previously presented uh, 
uh, implies uh, the, the following property of symmetric states is that it, uh, symmetric states remain symmetric after applying them any of the first four operations of Ketchup. So basically if we start with a symmetric state and we apply to it any of the first four Ketchup mappings then we end up with another symmetric state. Okay, which is of course not necessarily equal but it is also symmetric. Okay. However, the, the fifth mapping, the iota mapping of Ketchup, destroys the symmetry. Okay, so the perfect symmetry of the state is destroyed. Nevertheless, we can use uh, the, the following very basic idea in order to, uh, to try to attack the, the Ketchup, uh, ke the Ketchup hash, hash functions, or, or rather the, the reduced version of Ketchup. Okay, so here is a very uh, basic overview of our attack. So what we do is we pick a single block message uh, such that the initial state of Ketchup is symmetric. Now remember that the Ketchup uh, uh, state is initialized to zero, which is a symmetric value. And uh, as a result, we can indeed pick such a single block message. Okay, and then, of course, the state will remain symmetric after the first four mappings of uh, the Ketchup permutation. However, the, the, as I told you, the symmetry will be destroyed by the fifth uh, mapping. However, uh, since the, uh, the, fifth, the, the fifth mapping basically adds a very low Hamming weight uh, constant to the state, the, the, the symmetry will be only uh, slightly perturbed and not completely destroyed by the fifth mapping. And okay, the diffusion of ketchup is sufficiently slow such that the state uh, will remain somewhat close to symmetric in the first few rounds. So now the question is, is how do we exploit such states which are close to being symmetric in, uh, in order to, to attack the round reduced versions of Ketchup. So one of the main observations in, in this paper, which is very simple, is the following observation is that the output, the effective output size for uh, symmetric messages is reduced. Okay, because we know the, that the, uh, the final state after the uh, first few rounds is close to being symmetric, so the effective output size is uh, indeed reduced. And uh, we exploit this in a very natural attack, which we call the squeeze attack, uh, in order to, uh, to attack the hash function. And we call it the squeeze attack, uh, because basically what we do is we force uh, a larger than expected number of inputs to squeeze into a relatively small subset of all possible outputs in, the, in which uh, collisions are much more likely than, than for the, the uh, entire uh, output of the hash function. Okay, so schematically, the, the picture is like this. So this, this uh, left uh, circle represents all ketchup outputs. And if, if we try to evaluate an arbitrary output, then it will be mapped, sorry, this represents all ketchup input and, and inputs, and if we try to evaluate an arbitrary input, it will be mapped uh, to an arbitrary output on the right. However, if we try to evaluate uh, a symmetric uh, output, uh, sorry, a symmetric input from this uh, left uh, small circle here, then it will be uh, mapped with a relatively high, relatively good probability in those, into this uh, uh, right small circle here. Okay, so uh, this is basically, and, and this is uh, the, the, these cycles are the cycles that we are looking at in, in, the, in the squeeze attack in order to, to find collisions uh, uh, with better uh, complexity than the generic, uh, than generic collision attack. So basically if, if a member of the input set is mapped with probability P to the output set, which is of size D, then in order to find a collision, we need about, uh, to find about a square root of D uh, inputs that are mapped to this uh, small output circle. And then the complexity of uh, the, the collision attack in order to find one collision will be 1 over P times the square root of D. Okay, now of course in order to, for the attack to be efficient, we want P to be large as possible and we want D, the size of the uh, of the set here to be as small as possible. Okay, um, so in the, the remaining uh, uh, few minutes, I will explain to you exactly how how we uh, not exactly, but in general terms, 
uh, how we uh, compute this output subset uh, and how we uh, compute the probability p. Okay, so this is what I will concentrate on in the, in the next uh, few minutes. Okay, so we will use a very general framework that we call subset script analysis, and, uh, which is used by uh, uh, a lot of previous script uh, uh, analysis uh, work. Um, so basically our goal is to find what we call a subset characteristic in order to track the evolution of subset to the internal, internal state of the catch-up crypto uh, system. And this is done by associating, associating a triplet which is composed of the input subset and output subset and a transition probability to each uh, internal operation of the catch up state. That is how we uh, track the evolution of the subsets uh, that we are interested in uh, throughout the, the catch up mapping and we can uh, use it to uh, analyze the squeeze attack. And in particular what we will do is we will use uh, uh, the internal differential cryptanalysis which was introduced by Thomas Perrin at uh, Crypto 2010 uh, in the analysis of the hash function Grasshopper. So, in standard differential cryptanalysis, what we have is we consider message pairs which make up uh, a, a pair of states and we consider the evolution of the differences between the states. Okay, this is what we are all used to. However, in internal differential cryptanalysis, we have only a single message and we divide it into parts and we are tracking the difference between the parts of, of, uh, of a single state. Okay, so that is the difference uh, to, what we are, uh, to what we are used to. And in this work, we generalized the framework that was introduced by Thomas Perrin in several ways. So first, uh, it was uh, previously shown to be uh, applicable to hash functions that are built using separate data paths. However, Kerchak has only one that, that, that data path, and we actually uh, uh, show that we can use the, the framework even in this case. Uh, second, the differences that uh, were previously considered were between two parts of the state, whereas we consider uh, a more complex uh, differential relations between multiple parts of the state. Okay, we consider uh, four, 8, 16, and so forth. Most of our attacks uh, consider more parts of the state than two, and we uh, consider indeed more uh, uh, complex differential relations. Okay, so let's see exactly what types of relations we are looking at. So, like, uh, as I told you, in symmetric state, all consecutive slices, slice sets are equal, and then states which are almost symmetric, so the differences between uh, the first uh, CSS and the other uh, CSS, uh, which we denote by delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, again, we are looking at uh, a specific case just for, as an example of i equals 16, so we have four consecutive slice sets. Uh, so these differences are of low hamming weight. Okay, what we do is we basically group uh, all states with a fixed uh, value of delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 into what we call an internal difference set. Okay, and another way which will be slightly more convenient for us to define this uh, internal difference state is uh, internal difference set is the following. So assume we have we are given a state u, then we can define an internal difference set as follows. So we add to u all uh, vectors w mod uh, 2 uh, where w is, is symmetric. And you can see that the differences between the uh, CSSs are specified by, by our initial vector u, which we call the representative state of the uh, internal difference set. So this is some kind of a coset that we are looking at. Okay, so um, we define uh, um, the weight of the internal difference to be the, the weight of a state v of the lowest coming weight in, in this internal difference set. So a natural uh, uh, special uh, internal difference set that we will be looking at is the zero internal, internal difference which contains uh, all symmetric state and it has a weight of zero simply because it contains the, uh, the all zero state which is of course symmetric. 
Okay, so what we, we in order to, to devise a tap, we want to construct internal differential characteristics for the ketchup permutation. Okay, so um, in the paper, what we do is we describe how to track the evolution of internal difference of the set uh, through the ketchup permutation. So I'll, I do not have time, of course, to, to describe to you uh, all the tools that we use, but for example, uh, we, uh, like I told you before, we know that any symmetric state that is chosen from the zero self-difference remains symmetric after applying the first four ketchup permutation. Okay, and then in addition, in the paper we develop tools that allow us to construct internal uh, differential characteristics for the first uh, few ketchup rounds. Now again, I do not have time to elaborate on how we do this, but I will show you just a very, very simple example in the, in the, in the next slide. So this is a one uh, and a half round example, so I should explain to you uh, how to interpret this. So this is a ketchup state. You can see that it is composed of a five by five matrix, where each such uh, cell is a lane, is a 64-bit lane, which is uh, uh, which is written in hexadecimal, and a line here means that the, the value is zero. So you can see that this is actually the zero state. Now this is a representative state of the zero self-difference, which means that the the characteristic begins with a symmetric state. Okay, so we begin with the symmetric state, and then we apply the round function, and then we know that after the first four uh, mappings, the, 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 uh, the zero uh, internal difference will be mapped to itself. However, the symmetry is destroyed by the last mapping iota. So you can see there is uh, one value here. So the one is basically the iota constant which was added to the state, and now this state represents uh, 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 an internal difference which is what we call almost symmetric, okay? And then this asymmetry is, is then starts to, to diffuse through the ketchup permutation by this uh, L mapping, okay? You can see this uh, state is still has a large degree of, uh, uh, of, uh, of symmetry, but yet the, you can see the, that its humming, humming weight is, is, is large. Okay, and this is a very simple characteristic which has uh, a probability of one. Of course, in, in the paper we show that uh, we show uh, we present uh, more complicated characteristics. And uh, if you want to uh, to read a, if you want to to uh, take a look, then uh, read in the paper. Okay, so this was a, a 1.5 example, and in the paper we show how we can use them. In our, in our squeeze attack in order to attack the re run reduced versions of ketchup. So I will just uh, show you an uh, uh, example of actual collisions that we, uh, that we were able to, to find. So, like I said, we have some practical attacks. So uh, for three round uh, ketchup uh, 512, we chose a rotation index i uh, equals four. So we have our two messages and you can see that each uh, 64 bit word or line in the message is a is a 16 repetition of a 4 bit word. Okay, so there is a lot of symmetry here, and uh, okay, and the output collides on so this value. You can see that uh, there is also a large amount of symmetry in this uh, in this output. Okay, now one thing to notice here uh, is that actually the humming distance of the messages is quite large. Okay, and this is to uh, to be contrasted with standard differential attacks where the humming distance is usually small, and we we track it uh, 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 through the state of the of the hash function. Okay, and th this is just to to show you that we are using a different type of attack than we usually uh, used to, uh, because simply the 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 we can say that the these messages messages collided by chance, just by the, the birthday bound, which was uh, uh, applied to a smaller subset uh, than usual. Okay, and similarly, similarly we have a three-round collision attack for catch up the 384. Okay, and uh, yes, that's it. Okay, so uh, just to conclude, we presented the first collision attack 
uh, attacks on the Iran reduced ketchup to 84 and ketchup 512, and some of them are practical. Indeed, we showed some uh, collisions. And for ketchup 256, we increased the number of rounds that can be attacked from uh, 4 to 5. Of course, we are still very, very far from attacking the full 24 rounds of ketchup. And finally, a future work item that will be very interesting uh, to, uh, to find better internal differential characteristics for ketchup or to prove that they uh, do not exist. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Time for a quick question. Okay, I have one question. I, actually, when I look at the, the squeeze attack, um, I think it's also very similar to what was done for Cubash. You know, the, there are symmetric states, and the, the why it cannot really be applied to Cubash is because the initial value is not like all zero, so it's not symmetric in the value. So, would you say? Um, Actually, since the NIST is currently trying to, to standardize the Kitschak, perhaps shouldn't we try to modify the initial value and, and put something else? Because then it would make the attack much harder. Uh, in some sense, yes. Mm -hmm. um, for the larger versions of Kitschak, yes. For, uh, but interestingly, for Kitschak to uh, 256, the attack does not depend on the initial value because we have a enough degrees of freedom in order to, to obtain symmetric states anyway. Uh, but if NIST is worried about this, attacks on uh, three or four rounds, then uh, it can change it. But again, we are very, clo very far from attacking the hash yeah, function, sure. so I don't really... I mean, if you're not using that few rounds, then I don't think uh, at this point there is anything to worry about. Or, or perhaps puts like uh, Yota, which is more... Uh I mean, weights let as more. Uh, yeah, well, that's a, that's another possibility. <laughs> but again, I, I'm really not really sure that's necessary. Okay. okay so let's thank the speaker again.